again, Risa here, back with another episode of Ask Risa. This is my weekly video series where I answer some common wedding planning questions and talk about problems that you might be having if you're planning your own wedding. There are a whole bunch of other videos in this series which you can find either on my YouTube channel or on my IGTV. Both of those are under Risa James Events. This week, I wanna talk about something that's kind of a little bit of a tricky situation, maybe controversial, maybe a little sensitive, but I'm gonna do it anyway because it's important. And that is how to choose the right people to be in your wedding party. Um, it's just about Thanksgiving and it's basically going to be engagement season very soon. We call engagement season the period between Thanksgiving and Valentine's Day because according to some surveys done by the Not In A Wedding Wire, 40% of engagements happen in that time period. So a lot of people are gonna be choosing wedding party members in the next few months. So I wanted to make sure I covered this topic now. First off, I wanna explain why I say wedding party and not bridal party. It's common, it used to be common to call this the bridal party and a lot of people still do that. I do not. I am very careful about saying wedding party, both because it is very exclusionary toward LGBTQ plus individuals to call it a bridal party, but it's also exclusionary toward the groom. You know, there are two people in a wedding getting married. There's a bride and a bride, a groom and a groom, or a bride and a groom. So if we call it the bridal party, then we're leaving somebody out somewhere along the line. So wedding party is a much more inclusive term to use than bridal party. And if you are still using bridal party, um, if you're a, a wedding professional listening to this and you're still using bridal party, I would encourage you to think about correcting yourself and changing over to wedding party because it's just much more inclusive of everybody who's getting married. So with that being said, once you get engaged and you um, start thinking about who you want to ask to be in your wedding, to stand up with you by your side, to be your support system, you usually think of siblings and your best friends right away. And those are the most common people to be in your wedding. But I'm gonna tell you the things to think about to exclude people from your wedding party rather than include people from your in your wedding party. Anyone who is kind of like obsessed with the spotlight and the limelight, someone who really likes to be the center of attention is probably not the best choice to be in your wedding party because you wanna keep the focus on you as the couple who are getting married and you don't want people in your wedding party to be trying to draw focus away from you, to be trying to um, hog the spotlight for themselves. And so think long and hard about your friends and family's personalities. And if you think that they're kind of a spotlight hog, maybe you don't wanna have them in your wedding. It might be more of a headache for you to not have them in your wedding than it is to have them in your wedding based on, you know, maybe it's your sister and she's an attention whore and you don't really want her hogging the spotlight, but she's your sister and so everyone's going to assume that she'll be in your wedding, including her. So that's where you have to really tread lightly and treat the situation delicately. Obviously, I can't speak to that because personal, interpersonal dynamics are between you and the other person, but it's just something to be aware of, something to think about so that you can evaluate that situation on your own, and make the decision that's gonna be best for you. <laughs> um, second, anyone who has drug or alcohol addiction problems think very long and hard before you invite these people to be part of your wedding. I had a client recently who had a groomsman drop out two days before the wedding because his mother had checked him into rehab. I can assure you that when your wedding is two days away, the last thing you want to deal with is losing one of your groomsmen or bridesmaids. It's it's just not a headache that you want. So think about that. If any of your friends have addiction problems, it's probably best for them not to have the responsibility of being in your wedding. By all means, invite them to the wedding if you would like to, but being a bridesmaid or a groomsman or a maid of honor or a best man is responsibility and they are participating in your wedding and they are supposed to be there to support you. And if their presence in the wedding party is going to cause you headaches, 
that's not being supportive of you. That's causing you headaches. So try to think of it from that standpoint. And while I'm on the subject of having them as guests, if you have friends who have anger management problems or who are prone to drinking too much and, you know, starting fights or things like that, you want to think long and hard before you invite them to your wedding or in your wedding party because things happen. I, I had a situation once where someone drank too much, the bartender cut him off, and then he jumped over the bar and assaulted the bartender and one other person, and I had to call the police. And we managed to keep the wedding going, but it was very stressful for everybody involved, and it was just unnecessary. So use this as a cautionary tale. Think about your friends. Think honestly about your friends. Um, I'm not saying that people with drug and alcohol addiction problems should be judged or shunned, but if people have these problems and they're not doing what needs to be done to help themselves or get treatment or anything like that, then maybe you wanna rethink having them either as part of your wedding or attending your wedding as a guest. So again, something that you have to evaluate for yourself. On that note, another very sticky situation is friends who have um, depression and or anxiety because a lot of people suffer from depression, depression and or anxiety. Oftentimes they go together hand in hand. And again, I'm not saying these are bad people. I'm not saying that you should shun them, but people who suffer from depression and anxiety can't really predict when they're gonna have a bad day. Like the, a lot of times they're fine most of the time. A lot of people who suffer from these problems have uh, coping mechanisms, they, they manage it. But everybody has a bad day or an off day and you, you and they cannot predict when that might happen. And so you don't want one of their bad days to happen on your wedding day because they're gonna feel <sighs> obligated to be there for you, but they're also not going to be able to be there for you the way they would want to be there for you because they're struggling with these mental health issues. So if you have a good friend or a sibling who suffers from this, I suggest that you have a conversation with them about it. Feel them out on the topic, get their input, see what they think. It's best to, to ask what they think because they're the ones that know their situation best and they know their coping mechanisms and they know generally what they're up for and what they're not. They know what their bad days look like versus their good days. And you know, they're the best ones, um, the ones who are best able to figure out whether they can be for you, there for you the way you and they would want you them to be there for you. Um, there also may be a way for them to support you without being part of the wedding party, um, especially if they have anxiety and they have, um, you know, res reservations about standing up in front of people. It, you know, maybe don't ask them to be a bridesmaid. Maybe ask them to do something else to help you, um, and that probably does not include like giving a reading or you know a speech or anything like that. If they have the kind of anxiety that would prevent them from being up front in front of all the people, but again talk to them and find out what they're comfortable with and what level of support they can give you. And then my last point is um, financial. If you ask someone to be in your wedding and <laughs> the first thing they say is, I would love to if it doesn't cost me that much money, that's not a good sign. That is a red flag. I am speaking from experience. Um, one of my bridesmaids that was basically our exact conversation. And I should have realized that, that she just wasn't gonna be able to be there for me. And I overlooked it and I insisted that I wanted her to be in the wedding anyway. Now, we did not ask a lot of our wedding party. Um, you know, the standard like buy a dress, I tried to give them as much flexibility with the dress as possible. I tried not to choose an expensive dress and shoes and then travel to the wedding, which was in the same state that she lived, but a different city. I made it as easy as I could, but she made my life miserable because literally every single part of the wedding 
she was worried about the expense and she just didn't, she just made my wedding more stressful than it should have been. So let my mistake be a guide for you. If your friends express concern about the cost of being in your wedding, it's probably best for you to just allow them to graciously bow out of being in your wedding. Feel free to still invite them as a guest. They may or may not come because it is, you know, expensive to attend a wedding even as a guest with airfare and hotels and things like that. So just let this be a lesson to you because I wish that I had uh, heeded what my friend was telling me and we're actually not even friends anymore because of the whole experience and that's sad and I don't want that to happen to you and your friends so just let that let that be your guide so those are my tips for what who not to choose to be in your wedding party uh, things to watch out for delicate situations um, but otherwise people who are close to you and you think are going to be supportive of you on your wedding day, those are the people you want to have in your wedding party. So if you have any questions or if you have a specific situation that you would like to bounce off of me, feel free to um, DM me on Instagram and I am happy to confidentially answer your question and give you some advice on your specific situation. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.